to say the why. So and watch all this practice and I might still mess it up. No, you're amazing. <laughs> thank you so you made much. Made my day. Oh, thank you. Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. As often happens with this show, one guest is often referred by another guest, and the guest that referred to this guest was a wonderful physician named Dr. Siri Chan Khalsa, and today's guest is named Dr. Jyoti Patel. They actually both work together at the Chopra Center in Arizona, and I can't wait to hear her story. She's actually going to be talking about the health benefits of growing your own food. Please welcome her to the show. Thank you so much much for taking the time to come on. Thank you, Chef AJ. I'm a huge fan. I love your work and I'm so honored to be here today. Well, thank you so much for being there. I can't wait to hear your story, how you got in, interested in what you're doing, even before we get to the gardening aspect, which I think is amazing because I, I listen to a few podcasts with you and you actually have this big community garden. We do. We do. And so I'm a traditional primary care doctor. So I've trained in internal medicine and pediatrics. And I've been practicing in the Valley for 18 years. And I'm probably one of those dinosaurs that still owns their own practice. And you know, I lived and practiced in a small town. I was the only pediatrician in town, the only female internist in town. I had um, the love and trust of a lot of patients and I felt very um, needed and wanted, which was great. And everything was going perfectly with my practice, but something was missing. And as there were more pressures, from insurance companies and dictating terms of care, I felt that there was a separation from my relationship with my patients. One of the things I cherish is that people come to me, they open up to me, and I can actually be there as that silent witness to their experience and help them as their guide and get to know them and their children and their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren. And that was what medicine was about to me. Until then, there was the pressures of paperwork and metrics and, uh, you know, things we had to report, reporting standards, insurance billing, and the pressures of primary care started to change. And I felt that there was a separation from my mission and my goals and what I was able to achieve with my patients. So that's where I started to transition. And I went to Tucson and took the Integrative Medicine Fellowship under the tutelage of Dr. Andrew Weil. And it opened up a whole new world. And I know the people that watch your show already embrace a holistic, comprehensive lifestyle. Um, but I, as a primary care physician, was never taught that in medical school. And I didn't follow that dictum even in my own life. And most people can relate to this, but when you're in a professional career as, as a female, you're always trying to level up. You're working hard, you're working 10 times harder than your male counterparts. You're always sacrificing self and self-care. Um, for that achievement or that recognition. And so I can say that my own journey um, was one that led me to believe that this is the right path for my patients. When I was 27, I was in residency. I was getting my, I was going through my third year and I was pregnant with my first child. I was doing two residencies at the same time. I was working 120 hour weeks. I was sleep deprived, poor nutrition, extreme stress state. And it's that perfect storm that brews disease. And I was diagnosed with um, thyroid cancer and it was a variant of it, which ended up metastasizing to my neck and my chest. And it's unusual for that, but in my case, it required four neck dissections and radiation treatment. But here's that mindset of that 27 year old that needs to strive, that wants to continue to do things. I ignored my health, I kept going, I kept pushing another two years, more metastases, more, more surgeries, and I still didn't get the message. You know, I didn't get the message. Nobody gave me the memo that my lifestyle had everything to do with my disease. And so when I was practicing medicine, yes, it's something you say in passing, eat healthy, exercise, sleep well, but what does that mean, right? And so in my own life, I was able to experience what, it's, what it was like to be a patient what was like to be in the hospital and be vulnerable and not have information and be in a hospital gown and not be able to use the restroom. Just the simple, basic human needs that were, you know, we as medicine providers overlook, unfortunately. And I got to be on the other side of it, which again, for me, every obstacle in my life has taught me to be a better doctor, has taught me to be a better person. 
And so when I went through the Integrative Medicine Fellowship, it opened up this huge portal for me to not only help my patients, but to help myself. And if I didn't heal myself first, how was I going to heal others? And so I needed to have this whole new perspective to my own life. And so I started to change my own nutrition and I started to teach people in my own life. I would start to sprinkle in integrative medicine into my usual visits. And then I had an experience, a little Girl Scout. She's 10 years old. She was doing her Girl Scout project on role models and she asked me if she could interview me. And I said, sure. And she asked me all these questions like, how long does it take to get through medical school? Why did you choose medicine? All the easy answers. But then she asked me a really tough question. What do you do for community service? And I was like, well, I donate my time. You know, I volunteer at places. I give away my old clothes. But again, a bell rang just like before. Like, what am I doing for community service? What is my obligation as a physician, as a teacher, as a healer in my community? And I don't know if you believe in this, but I got a download. It was like I needed to create a place that I could teach people how to live with the land and how can live with each other and how they can grow their own food and how they can be in the sun and the soil and they can be outside working hard and they can feel the joy when they're, when they're eating their own crop. And so came in this idea of a community garden, but Chef AJ, I knew nothing about a community garden. How was I gonna create one? Where was I gonna create one? How was it gonna happen? And I started, to, searching. I started holding, holding forums in my office, inviting farmers, gardeners, contractors, local residents, anybody else wanting to do a community garden. And I swear to you, it must have been, you know, some type of spiritual experience because I had so many people gathering in my office, all wanting this experience of, of gardening. I went to the town council, went to the mayor, got a piece of land that was basically rock, that they weren't using for anything, two and a half acres. And I had the support of so many good people. We had donations from contractors, from woodworkers, from the local businesses, from local people, residents, gardeners that came in and started to build this garden. Then now we have, I am proud to say, two and a half acres of organic farming. We have over 400 garden members. We have beehives. We have a compost program. We have greenhouse. We have an outdoor kitchen where we do garden to teach table education. And we have weekly, and not weekly, monthly cooking demos from local chefs and local talents. They come in and they teach the residents how to use the food that they're growing to, to their table. So isn't that amazing? Yeah, that reminds me of this place I teach in Mexico, Rancho La Puerta, like from farm to table. What could be fresher and better? Yes, exactly. And I just, I feel like more communities need to hear this message that it's possible. If we in Arizona, in 120 degrees, can garden, anyone else can. And if we can create a community effort this big and this powerful to transform people's lives, you know, I think that anyone can. I had a visit from a eight-year-old boy. I've known him since he was born. And his dad brought him in. Three years ago, he joined the garden with his dad. And when I saw him in the practice, he had chronic allergies, severe immunodeficiency, um, always infections. I would have to send him to the immunologist, send him to the allergist. He was on a um, you know ton of medications for, for his chronic illness. His dad was so happy, he said, he hasn't been sick in a year. He hasn't been sick in a year. I mean, I was just floored. I was like, oh my God, that's such good news. I go play with the soil, eat real food. I asked him, what do you like to eat? He, and his dad's like, he likes to pick things right out of the garden and eat them fresh. And I'm like, this is so good. If there was anything else that this was supposed to mean for me, it was really being able to see this in the children that are participating in our garden. The, the adults that come in whose lives have been transformed. I had this, um, this experience where this old lady with a walker had come in and she said to me, this is better than Prozac. And I was like, I think I need a plaque that says that because how amazing that you can walk into a green space and immediately just from those plants, you get these natural endorphins, right? The plants speak to us and you're nourished by 
the greenery and the plants and the solitude and the sun and the soil. And when you nourish your plants and they grow and they thrive, it brings you joy. But when they don't, you actually learn another lesson in patience and humility. Uh, and gardening is definitely a humble experience. I've been through a lot of failures and that perfectionist in me always gets a little, you know, dig every time something doesn't doesn't flourish. So um, I don't know. Do you do you garden, Chef AJ? No, I don't. And I, I mean, I actually just started growing sprouts. So that's my first oh, okay. foray into growing things, which, you know, is amazing because anybody can grow them. That You know, you can even grow them in your hotel room if you had to with it with a with one of those mesh bags you know last week I had on Dr. Ron Weiss who's an MD in New Jersey who has a farm and it's just the idea that you know doctors are going back to the earth is amazing but you know your story about being so sick and just ignoring all the signs many doctors that have been on the show like Dr. Brooke Goldner and uh, uh just uh, there's so many with healing stories from disease. It's it's so interesting when you're on the other side mm -hmm. of medicine, isn't it? Because you know you don't really practice. You know when you go to law school, my understanding is like they practice you know doing mock trials, but you don't really ever practice being a patient until you are one. Absolutely, and I think that that's what's missing in medicine these days is the heart of the healer. Um, and I am, like I said, a dinosaur still in my own solo practice. Um, still take care of people in an old fashioned way, um, hand hold them. Yes. Um, you know, listen to their story. A lot of times doctors will rely on diagnostics to tell you if you're sick or well, and they miss the real person that's sitting in front of them. I'll share a personal story of mine. Um, you know, right during the time where COVID was going on, my sister, who's only a year older than I am, we're very similar in, um, in age and in, and in health. She's never been in the hospital, doesn't take any medications. She's a yoga master. She's an avid, um, she works out. She's a vegan. She's just, just the healthiest person. She had severe chest pain and shortness of breath. This was a late night, uh, 2019 in November before we knew about COVID. And she went, to, I took her to the emergency room and you could see that she was not well. And I, being a physician, standing next to her saying, she's not well. I got ignored by the emergency room physician. I, um, she crashed in the ER. She went into cardiac arrest. I knew it was her heart. And they brought three other physicians to sit in front of me to tell me she had, that all her diagnostics didn't point to the heart. I talked to the cardiologist, I am a physician, I'm so frustrated. I'm like, how do other people do this? She would have died if the emergency room physician had sent her home. And, and so anyway, long story short, they took her to surgery and she had 200 cc's of fluid around her heart. She was in tamponade. They had to put a tube in her chest, they had to drain her chest, follow up, they had to drain her lungs. And had I not been standing there as her advocate, doing that physical exam, knowing what she looks like on a normal day, what she looked like in the ER, she would have been sent home. And Chef AJ, that would have been the most tragic day of my life because here I am in medicine and I see the other side, how they ignore patients. They don't listen to the story. They don't do a proper exam and they dismiss if they can't diagnose based on diagnostics. And so I think there's gotta be a shift in, in medicine as well. And I'm hoping to be one of those lights, those lighthouses to bring this different way of practicing medicine. And from that transition came functional medicine. And that's a practice that most people don't understand. So if you don't mind, I'd like to give the, the audience just a brief explanation of how, what integrated functional medicine is and what traditional medicine can be. Absolutely, okay? because because what people I think sometimes don't realize that you're, you're you're a medical doctor first. You went to medical school. This was like an advanced thing, and so people really do benefit. You know, even like lifestyle medicine doctors, they they're already their specialty, but this is like an add-on that I think is so beneficial because so many people don't want to use a lifestyle medicine doctor or a functional medicine doctor because they have insurance and don't want to pay out of pocket. But they don't realize it's it's so different. You know, when you just go to a doctor who's in your network, it's like that doctor in the ER. But when you go to a doctor like yourself or lifestyle medicine doctor, you actually get listened to. I think that's the difference. And a lot of patients may misunderstand why physicians go outside of the realm of insurance or outside of the realm of traditional medicine is because they don't respect this type of medicine and they don't pay for it. And so we had, I was, I had my foot in two boats for three years. I was practicing traditional medicine, but I was also giving my patients a lot of integrative medicine, but there was no reimbursement for when I spent 
you know, 30 minutes to an hour with my patient. Um, as a primary care doctor, I have worked as internist, I've worked in the ICUs, in the cardiac care units. I've admitted my own patients in the hospital, I've taken care of them from birth to death in the clinic. I do my own newborn checks, my own circumcisions. I do all this myself because I love my patient. So if I've chosen this style of medicine, it's not because of any other reason, but because I want to be the best physician for you. And while I'm shackled, to the rules and regulations of insurances and medical mandates, I can't give you that. I have to write for the prescription that your insurance covers. I have to write for a prescription. At the end of my practice in Fountain Hills, I would get letters from the insurance company saying, your diabetic patient needs to be on this medication. Your, med your patient needs to be on this cholesterol medication. They were dictating terms of care. Now, here's the other nefarious part. They reimburse you better if you comply. So if a doctor becomes complacent and compliant, then they pay you. And that's not really what medicine should be about. I should be working on the best interest of my patient. So if you come to see a lifestyle practitioner doctor, or you come to see a integrative or functional doctor, you don't have to worry that our interests are not aligned with your best health, right? We are your doctor. We are here 110% to make you well. I am invested. I am happy and joyous when you get well. Traditional medicine, unfortunately, is, is embedded in sick care. Um, there's a lot of money to be had if you stay sick and stay in the system. There's no money to be had if you're well and don't need us but once a year. Isn't that unfortunate? So if in my practice modality, when you come see an integrative doctor, we put you in the driver's seat. We are your partner. We are your guide. I get a full history from the time that you were born to before you were born, what your environment was like, who you live with now, what are your stressors, what are your dreams, what is your diet like, right? I get a full detailed three-day journal from you before you come in so I know exactly what you're eating. What are your exercise habits? What are your sleep habits? What are your health goals? I don't want to project what I think you need to work on. I want to work with you with, on what you want to work on. And so when you come to an integrative doctor, you get a holistic approach. And one of the things that traditional doctors are afraid of talking about is spirituality and purpose. And one of the things that we do in our clinic is we always like to connect at an energetic level with our patients as well. And that might sound a little fringy to traditional doctors, but we're all energetic beings. We use energy in medicine right now. We use MRI machines, we use CAT scans, we use EKGs, we use EEGs to measure brain activity and heart activity. So we're not, not familiar with using energy medicine. But when we talk about energy in a spiritual way, it seems um, disconnected, but it isn't. You know, you, talk, you mentioned doctors don't like to talk to their patients about spirituality. But one doctor that I greatly admire, Dr. Dean Ornish, has no problem doing that. And I had heard in a podcast, you said you actually put one of your patients on the Ornish program and he got well. He did. So there, I love talking about him. He's actually scheduled for me to see this week. He's a gentleman that's in his 60s. He has a, um, a, a son who's in his 30s that's paralyzed from the neck down. And this gentleman is his sole caregiver. He transfers him in the middle of the night. He turns him, he bathes him, he feeds him, he clothes him. This dad is dedicated to his adult son who is handicapped. The, the dad got a heart attack, had a heart attack. He had been seeing a cardiologist. He's you know, on all the traditional medications. He's a diabetic, all, all the medications. He came to see me. And I said to him, I said, this is the path that's going to be most difficult. But I need you to change your diet. Would you be able to follow Dr. Dean Ornish's plan? And he looked at me at first skeptical, of course, because it's hard, change is difficult. And to trust that I have a formula that's different than what their doctors have been telling them is difficult. He did it. He told, he did it for three months. He came in for his lab test. He sat down at my, uh, in my office and said, if my numbers don't look good, I'm told, I told my wife I'm going back. I was like, okay. I pulled out the piece of paper and I showed it to him. And his jaw dropped and he actually started crying because his labs have never been better with all the medications he's taken and everything. He's never seen his numbers that low. And he was shocked, but he was shocked into sort of a space where he was like, okay, 
here it is. Here's the answer I've been looking for. Because his biggest fear, Chef AJ, is that he was going to die of a heart attack and leave his son without any care. That's his motivator. He's driven by taking care of his family. And that drive, that reason why, was enough. And he's been doing it for five years now. And he's doing amazing. And, and I just, I love telling his story because I want to empower people to know that it is not impossible. Yes, you can get off your diabetes medicines and your cardiac medications. Not really, if you have to talk to your doctor first, but there's a role for, for being able to move away from chronic disease by changing your lifestyle. I have one more story about that. So I have this lady, okay? And she's probably in her late 60s. She's been married to her husband for 40 years. She had severe atherosclerosis. She was 100 pounds overweight. Her cardiologist basically said to her, there's no more medical intervention. You're medical management only at this point. What that means is there are more, no more stents that he can put in to open up her arteries. She came to my office very angry. How dare he ask me to lose weight? I'm not going to. And I said, okay, I took a deep breath, right? No judgment, no criticism, just understanding. I needed to understand her why. So I said, well, why not? And she said, well, my husband and I love each other very much. We have a very close relationship and he loves my cooking. Like he looks forward to me setting the table, meat and potatoes, butter, all those kinds of foods. She just says he enjoys it. And this is his connection to me. And this is how I receive love. So then I thought about it and I said to her, what if you die of a heart attack tomorrow? What would happen to him? And she said, he would be devastated. He doesn't know how to take care of himself. He would be lost. So then I said, okay, what if you were able to live for a very long time and be there for him and carry him and care for him and nourish him and nurture him? Would you take that chance? And she's light bulb, yeah. Oh my God, I never thought of it that way. And she lost that hundred pounds. I'm just like floored every time I see people, you know, like their light bulb moment. And then they come in and they're so joyous and so successful. I feel joy in my heart. And that's what medicine is. That's what being a healer is. It's not my, you know, merry-go-round of giving people prescriptions and lab work and they're just sending them away to just come back again. It's to actually see them thrive right? Health is not just the absence of disease. It's this ability to live your life with full fullness and joy and happiness. And that's what health should be. So isn't that wonderful? I would love, you know, I, 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 hindsight's always 2020 would have been great to bring both of those patients on for a testimonial. I would love to meet both of them. They sound amazing. Oh my gosh. They are good people. And, and I think what, what happens now is my, my population is probably a little biased because now that I do more integrated functional medicine, I attract people that are already stepping into the arena. They're already frustrated with their current healthcare. They're already frustrated with their health and they want, they're seeking a change. And so that's really important with motivational interviewing to see, you know, are you ready for that change? Are there a lot of I can't, you know, or resistance or, you know, obstacles that you've created that are keeping you from making that change? Um, and if you're not quite ready, you can still come see me. We could still talk about it. I feel like it's healing people in slow motion. So it's like a little bit at a time, you know, convincing them. They may be here. I might think that they're going to be perfect here. I just want them to take a step towards it and then take another step towards it and take another step towards it. And I empower them with knowledge and hope so that when they are successful, they can celebrate their wins. I don't make it about my win. I'm not here to save your life. I'm here to guide you. And you are the true healer. Your body is its best doctor. And if you're intuitive with that intelligence and energy that runs through every cell in our body, and you reconnect with your breath and your body and your thoughts and your emotions, you can move yourself closer and closer to your perfect self, which is just happiness, which is just pure love which is living your best life with the people that love you. Wow, that's really amazing. You know, you mentioned the cardiologist told patients she needed to lose 100 pounds. And I, I host something annually called the Truth About Weight Loss Summit. And so many of the doctors are saying they don't even know how to broach the, the weight subject with patients because, it, it, you know, we have this new movement, health at every size. But we know, you know, as a doctor that there are risks being overweight or obese. That, that And so I, I imagine it's got to be difficult when you have a patient 
that, that really needs to lose weight for their health to tell them? Yeah, I mean, again, it's compassion. It's understanding that it's not lack of knowledge. Um, weight loss and weight gain is a very complex metabolic problem. Um, and it's driven by, uh, you know, dysregulation of hormones in the system. So I never shame or, you know, blame the person for, for, the, for the obesity, if that's the case, because it's really not about that. It's, you know, there's this vicious cycle of met metabolic change that happens in the system. Also, we know that the food industry doesn't make it easy for people to become addicted to the wrong kinds of food, sugar, salt, oil, like you talk about. And also the food industry puts in additives and chemicals and dyes and binders that cause dysregulation. We also have xenoestrogens and xenohormones in our food that can trigger the body to gain weight. And you have this large amount of belly fat that secretes um, hormones that can dysregulate appetite, that can cause changes in the brain, that can cause cravings. So it's, it's, it's a complex problem. And if anybody watching is looking to, um, to, to move in that direction in a healthy way, always do it with medical supervision um, because you really wanna make sure you're doing slow, gradual changes and not abrupt, drastic um, fad diets that are going to put you again into a metabolic uh, derangement. It's gonna slow down your metabolism. It's gonna give you nutritional deficiencies. Um, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, harm that can be done if you don't do it in a safe manner. So, you know, again, I would advise seeking medical um, opinion and, and guidance if you are somebody that's looking to make those kinds of changes. Do you agree, Doctor? Do you agree? Uh, yeah. Well, I think I think support is key, whether it's from a group or a doc. I mean, I think I think very few people can really do it on their own. That's what I'm yeah. noticing. Because and I love that you guide people as well. I mean, you've had your own journey, and I've I've heard you know I listened to your your story, and I love that you come from a space of knowing as well. Um, I think that just brings out your purpose and your connection with people. So I just love that story about how you've transformed and now you're transforming so many other people's lives with your programs. So thank you for all that you do. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. So there's a few questions, Dr. Patel, about, could you explain what's the difference between functional medicine, natural medicine, integrative medicine, lifestyle medicine, are they related or how are they different? Okay, so in a holistic way, it's just good medicine, right? But if you had to break it down, um, lifestyle medicine is a fellowship that you can take and you can get certified in lifestyle medicine. So it's a two-year program that some physicians will take, like myself, to be a lifestyle coach. They do have uh, specific things that they work on, five different things. They work on nutrition, sleep, movement, uh, removing substances, and stress reduction, so that's lifestyle medicine. It's just an add on to your doctor's training to help you with those five things. Now, integrative medicine is a, is a recognized fellowship as well. And it's a board certified fellowship. So it's recognized by the medical community. And it's again, a more holistic um, way of looking at medicine. So not only am I a medical doctor taking care of your acute care, but I'm also gonna help you develop a comprehensive plan for meditation, mindfulness, maybe even incorporate yoga into your practice. Or if you're into traditional Chinese medicine or acupuncture, let's talk about that. Let's talk about your purpose in life. Let's talk about your connection with your family members. Let's talk about your connection with yourself, your sleep habits, your movement habits. So integrative medicine is putting you in the center of this comprehensive um, program that's both Eastern and Western medicine, okay? So traditional Eastern medicines and our Western idea of medicine. Um, naturopaths are not MDs, they're NMDs. So they go through a four-year program um, as a naturopath and they are, they are basically trained again to have a more holistic approach to health. Um, some of them will go on to do internships or, or residencies or fellowships, some people don't. So your naturopath is just trained in a different school of medicine. Um, functional medicine, that is so fun for me because as a scientist, I want to know why you're sick. What is the root cause of your imbalance? For instance, I had a young lady, 30 years old, just on Thursday. She has eight autoimmune conditions. She's on 27 medications. She's been sick since she was eight years old. And she sought me out because she wanted to find out why. And I just, I just that's where functional medicine helps us because functional medicine takes us down to the root cause of where that imbalance happens. 
And one of the things that we talked about was adverse childhood events trial. I don't know if you're familiar with the adverse, adverse childhood events study. Is this perfect storm of stress, environment, genetics, prenatal even stressors that sets the tone, sets the stage for dysregulation in the system and upregulation to fight or flight, the autonomic drivers, the sympathetic nervous system, you're on the gas pedal from the time you're born, it causes the adrenal glands to get dysregulated, and then that causes havoc and inflammation, that causes a downstream domino effect, and you start to have problems with insulin regulation, blood pressure regulation, pulse regulation, your immune system starts attacking itself. If you've taken a lot of antibiotics when you were younger, you've killed all the good microbes in your colon that help you regulate your system, that causes a downward a spiral to absorption of nutrients, inflammation, leaky gut. So I can talk on and on, but I just want your audience to know that if you have a chronic disease and you don't want to just keep going with the chronic disease, you actually want to find out what's out of balance in the system, then consider seeking out a functional practitioner who can help you delineate that. Maybe they do a stool analysis to see what your gut flora looks like. Maybe they do a breath test to see if you have overgrowth of bacteria yeast. Maybe they do a blood test to see what nutrients you're actually missing instead of taking 20 supplements that you might not need. So I think it's customized medicine is what functional medicine is. It's not cookie cutter like westernized medicine can be for chronic disease. It's looking at the individual and personalizing their treatment based on their genetics, based on their epigenetics, based on their labs and their micronutrients, their gut health, so much more. And we are, we are foolish if we don't move in the state of personalizing healthcare, right? So, and, and I just love to share this one thing. Ayurvedic medicine was the original functional medicine. So I don't know if you're familiar, are you familiar with Ayurveda? Yeah, Should absolutely, absolutely. Pita Kapha Avada. Yes. I, I forget what I am. I'm the one that, I'm the one that's, uh, I'm always cold. You're so vata. <laughs> yeah, you're vata. You're creative. You're constantly on the move. You have lots of ideas. You're always, you know, always everywhere. And you're you're changing and you don't mind a challenge. Um, that's the vata in you. So for those who don't know what Ayurvedic medicine is, it's 5,000 years old. Okay, so it's been 5,000 years in the making. And initially it was oral translation. So healers would tell other healers what they were learning based on their experience. And what they did was they took the individual, they asked them all the same questions. Where were you born? What were your parents like? What did you eat? Where do you live? What do you like? What do you don't not like? What's your personality like? What do you look like? They would check your eyes, your tongue, your pulse, your skin. They would do a full thorough evaluation. They would even check your stool to see what was wrong, what was out of balance. And then they would give you a customized health plan, not cookie cutter, specifically when you should rise in the morning, what kind of exercise you should do, what foods you should avoid and what foods you should eat and what botanicals and herbs are gonna help keep you balanced. It, it included a meditation practice to decrease stress. They included a sleep practice. Isn't that amazing that 5,000 years ago, they had this information and we've sort of lost our way, but we're coming back to that same space, which is what I love about medicine. It's very cyclical. I love that. So yeah, I love the idea of individual medicine and sort of like conventional medicine is like buying like a pre-made cake in the bakery, which you know it's pretty good, but making your own cake is way better. Yeah, <laughs> like that. I love the cooking analogies. Yeah, absolutely. Like sometimes, you need to go to the urgent care. You have a cut, okay? I can't pray over it. You have to get it sewn up, okay? That's just how medicine works. So there is a need for acute rescue care, but I believe in a blend, you know, blending that Eastern and Western philosophies of medicine, blending that holistic lifestyle with Western approaches. We live in the best time ever. We have technology, we have imaging, we have labs, we have so much information at our fingertips. We are blessed. But we also can't forget the knowledge and the wisdom that thousands of years have accumulated. And we need to be honest and humble, but that is important as well. Well, people are asking, do you only practice in Scottsdale, Arizona, see patients in person, or do you do any kind of virtual medicine? So if I am I acting in the construct of a physician, the answer is yes. You have to be in the state of Arizona. 
Um, but if you're um, seeking wellness consultation, uh, that is that I can do that anywhere in the States. So if you're just looking for opinion um, and uh, recommendations, I can suggest those over uh, a Zoom call or a phone call. But if it's if I'm actually prescribing tests or I'm uh, dictating treatment or writing prescriptions, um, then that requires a face-to-face -face visit with me. Um, must the person live in Arizona for both? Oh, they just have to establish care with me. Um, so I have a lot of patients that live in multiple places and they come here, they see me, I establish care with them and then we can continue care wherever they are on the planet really. So nice. um, we don't, I don't, yeah. So I, there are no limitations as long as I've established care with them in a face-to-face -face manner. Nice. Is Patel a very common last name? It's like Smith. I was going to say, I, so I have the like, fun. It yeah. was it's so funny because I I, I I I keep this calendar for who's going to be on the show. And I book about four months in advance. And a, a few weeks ago or a month ago, I had on the calendar on a Saturday, Dr. Patel. And that was it. No email, no name. And I went crazy. I emailed you. I emailed everybody I knew with the name. I mean, there's a lot of doctors that are having the name Patel till I found the one that was supposed to be yeah, on the show. It, but It's like Smith. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. something you know interestingly enough we probably know somebody that knows somebody and we all speak the same language we probably come from the same part of the country we have very similar cultural beliefs and you know food and stuff like that so we would um and you know we would probably know somebody that knows somebody but yeah that's a very common last name right i know that now and i'm always going to write the guest's first name just in case yeah. so that was so funny i remember emailing you like no i'm on may 11th my like, gosh i mean who is this guest i luckily i found him yeah was i he, saw his interview it was great yeah he, he was a, his yeah. endocrinologist so hum but your skin i just don't mean to segue but your skin is beautiful is that because of genetics or your lifestyle or maybe a combination I think it's the same. I think it's everything. If you had, if you had visited with me, I'm gonna say four years ago when I was in my traditional practice, still running my own practice, owning my own space, and, you know, and um, seeing I had nine thousand patients to me, um, so that was a big um, pressure on my my shoulders. I looked very different. I was very exhausted. Um, I thought I had learned my lesson, but I didn't. Uh, and then I changed my practice model and I'm so much more healthier. I, uh, I'd like to share this with your audience. I did a telomere test on myself when I was in the practice. For those of you who don't know what a telomere test is, it's measuring the ends of your chromosomes, like the caps on your shoelaces. And my test showed me that I was 10 years older than my biological age. And, um, you know, and I, it was again, an, another light bulb moment for me like, okay, here I am thinking I'm an integrative functional doctor. I'm doing all this good stuff, but I'm really doing my best to take care of myself. And um, I shifted my practice model. Now I do my meditation every day. It's part of my sort of spiritual practice that I don't miss. I have a yoga practice. I have time in nature. I spend more time with my family. Um, I slow down and make my own meals. Uh, there's just been so many more shifts that I've done. And like I said, maybe you're not perfect and that's okay because I wasn't perfect and I'm still not perfect. Uh, but just keep moving gently towards that goal of yours, whatever it is. And if you want to incorporate more plants in your diet, start with putting just one vegetable on your plate. You know, there, there's no shame or guilt for not being perfect. You know, just add a little bit more. Maybe you just substitute one drink with water a day and that's how you make that shift. So just on that telomere story, I repeated my telomeres recently, and now I'm my biological age again. So my goal is in the next few years, I want to be 10 years younger. That's, that's amazing. So is this a test that only functional medicine doctors do? What's it called? Because I, I would love to know how old I am inside. Yeah, it's a, it's a telomere test. The company that I use is called Cell Science, um, and it's a genetics test. So it's easy to, um, to acquire. Um, you know, all genetics tests are not made equal they do a specific one. They actually measure the telomeres in the cells as opposed to just a buccal swab. So I like them better. Uh, SpectraCell is another lab that does telomere testing. I'm not affiliated financially with any um, you know, companies, but SpectraCell is another company that does a telomere test and it's very accurate. And it's, it's a good way to see whether or not you're optimizing your health. And what causes aging? Oxidative stress, right? Free radicals, oxidative stress that we produce in our cells and oxidative stress we get from the environment. UV light, pollution, toxins, waste, all that stuff is in our food, water, and soil. That ages us rapidly. Stress causes our cells to burn a lot more energy, which causes more free radical stress. 
and that causes oxidation of our tissue. Think about cutting up an apple and leaving it outside. It starts to brown, right? Or take a banana peel and leave it on your porch. See what happens in an hour. It turns brown, it oxidizes. Your cells are constantly oxidizing as well. What protects your apple? What protects your banana? Antioxidants, vitamin C. Do you ever put like lemon juice on your guacamole or lemon juice on your apples slices to keep them from browning? Because it's the vitamin C, the antioxidants that are protecting that delicate flesh from oxidizing. So when you eat powerful antioxidants, vitamin A, C, and E, you are nourishing your cells with antioxidants that are squelching those free radicals. So isn't that cool that science and, 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 and the nature can kind of come together and tell us how we can be better and healthier and, and more youthful? That is so cool. I, I've got to take that test. Is it invasive? How is it, uh, how is it done? And is it, is it fairly costly? Um, it's about $150 to $200. Um, and you can get it through a blood test. I would recommend the blood test over the, the cheek swab. The cheek swab is not as accurate as the blood test. So I would recommend going with the blood test. And like I said, the two companies that I'm familiar with is Cell Science and SpectraCell. And if you have a lifestyle practitioner that you're working with, I understand they might be able to order that test for you. Um, and it's kind of a nice exercise to see where you're at. I do also recommend doing inflammation markers. It's another way for me to see if somebody's, um, you know, having free radical damage. So here's another misnomer. A lot of patients are under this misguidance that their cholesterol is causing their heart disease. It is oxidation of that cholesterol. It's the quality of that bad cholesterol that is increasing inflammation in the arteries. It's not cholesterol in general. Cholesterol is an important part of our health. It produces our cell membranes. It produces our hormones like cortisol, progesterone, estrogen, testosterone. Cortisol is an, cholesterol is an important part of our brain function. So when you go to see your doctor, if you're worried about your risk for heart disease, have them do specific cardiac inflammation markers covered by insurance, covered by Medicare, and available at your local lab, like Sonora Quest. It's called a Cardio IQ. It's a full panel of 30 inflammation markers. So what we used to do was just, just check your cholesterol, your HDL, your LDL, and your triglycerides. That's no longer um, good enough. You need to have HSCRP, LPPLA2, fibrinogen, homocysteine. You need to look at your omega-3 levels. There's so many more tests now available to you and covered by insurance that can tell you if your risk is elevated. Isn't that fascinating that we can use science and nutrition to help you? I'm blown away. I just want to know how old I am inside. I, I'm doing, I'm <laughs> going to believe me as soon as we get off the, you know, it's funny what you said about your patients, how, what, you know, how you love them. And, you know, I think that's how I feel about this show with my guests. It's just like, I just, I have that same kind of connection and that's really what gets you up in the morning, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's what gives us purpose. And I think yeah. every person needs purpose for them to thrive. Um, I have patients who have cancer, who have no purpose, no connection, no people in their life. And it's, you know, and it's hard for them to survive or thrive. I have patients, same kind of cancer, but they have great support group. They have purpose in their life. They have, you know, a reason to live and they thrive. So there's something about our energetic purpose that can power ourselves through adversity. And so I, I encourage my patients to always find something that gives them purpose. If it's giving to others, if it's volunteering, if it's belonging to a community garden, if it's you know taking care of a loved one or maybe a stranger, you know a neighbor that's elderly that needs your support, you have reason to live. And then that gives you purpose and that drives you to make good decisions for yourself. So purpose is so important. Yeah, absolutely, that's so cool that the little Girl Scout was the one that really uh, got you. She got me, she got me in a good way. And, you know, now with the garden for folks that are watching, you know, if you're not a gardener, I understand, you know, not everybody has to be a gardener, but it's so important for the environment. You know, if I didn't say enough about the environment right now, I would, it was a disservice to, 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 you know, to my time. It's such an important thing. We put so much in our landfills. Um, so much compostable material ends up in landfills and releases methane. Um, so much waste, food waste happens in this country and across the globe. If we can be more conscientious about the environment and we can recycle our food, recycle our, sub our goods, we can save our planet. If we can be conscientious about how much food we consume and how much food we waste, we can save our planet. 
And if you want to be healthier, one of the best ways is to garden. It's a physical laborious exercise. It takes you outside of your home and connects you to the earth. It grounds you. For me, it's a spiritual practice. For me, I also get to garden with other people. So I see my community, my the other people around me. And so I get to connect. I have this 94 year old man who gardens right next to me and he gave me a huge stash of his kale. Um, so you get goods from other people, even if your garden's not flourishing. Uh, so there's a lot of kind of benefits to that. And if you don't have a community garden, you could start it on your windowsill with small amount of herbs. You could have a tomato plant on your porch. Just make sure you're growing what you wanna eat. So that way you're not wasting that as well. Um, and it doesn't take a whole lot of effort. It really is very, very simple. I'm not a gardener. I've been a, an apprentice uh, under the Master Gardeners for the last few years. And so I've learned how to garden. And then we also have a composting program. So I really encourage people to consider composting their um, kitchen scraps. If you don't cook them up um, and you're about to toss them in the trash, think about maybe putting them back into the earth. When you put them in a plastic bag and you wrap it up and put it into a landfill, it doesn't decompose. It just, it ferments and it causes methane release. Um, so if you put it into the ground, it's a lot easier. So that's a great idea. I, I've got to find out if there is something like that. Where do people find out if they have these compost areas near them? Is there a website? Because I think more people would do it if they knew where it was available. Yeah, in, in larger cities, they actually have companies that will come by and for a service fee, pick up your compostable material. Um, in smaller towns, you might just want to look at a local farm. I mean, you know, I'm sure you buy local as well, but I encourage people to buy from local farmers all the time. Uh, we have a wonderful local uh, farmer here, uh, Singh Farms, that I visit often, and he makes his own compost. So even if you don't have a place you can go to, just Google local farms in your area and see if they'll take your, your compostable material because a lot of them make their own compost. Now, let's say you're, you're not that, you're, not ex you're in the urban areas, you're in the city, it's not accessible to you. You can buy your own composting um, tools. Did you know that Vitamix makes something that you can actually recycle your food scraps? I did not know that. Yeah, it's called, here, I wrote it down because I was like, what? That's you awesome. are just a wealth of information. I'm going to be following up on all these leads. And I can't It's called you. a Vitamix food cycler. Wow. And it's, it's about 400 bucks and it sits on your countertop and you put all your kitchen scraps in there. And in a few hours, it's this fine dust. It turns into, you know, like not, it's no methane release no fermentation. It's just all emulsified. Like your Vitamix would emulsify your juice. It emulsifies your food scraps. And then you can just toss it into your plants or you could just toss it outside, you know, back into the earth. So it's called a Vitamix food cycler. Um, but so for those of you who, you know, don't have access to a composting program, now it's not fermenting, right? So it doesn't have bacteria and worms in it. It's just blending it up into fine dust, but it's still taking care of your waste and not putting it into landfills. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Do you find Dr. Patel that sometimes a traditional conventional doctors sometimes roll their eyes at functional medicine doctors, even though you have the same training as them, but more uh, in other areas? Yeah. I think the reason for that is that there's a spectrum of functional practitioners. Um, and so with any medicine, whoever you go to, make sure that your doctor um, is properly trained, is giving you vetted evidence-based medicine. Um, so I understand their um, hesitancy because there can be a lot of fringe functional practices out there that can be fads and um, not based in, in, in evidence-based studies. So I, I too have to vet my information. So for, the, for my colleagues that are in traditional medicine, you're absolutely right. Any medicine can be dangerous. One man's poison, another man's cure. So the same supplement is not right for everyone. Okay, so if you see on a functional blog, that you need to take X, Y, Z, just because it worked in one person doesn't mean it's gonna work in you. So you definitely need to make sure that if you're choosing functional medicine as your modality for health, that you go to a trained, certified functional practitioner. And you also question, because medicine is about questioning. Question everything, okay? So question whether or not this drug is right for you, right? But then question if the supplement is right for you. Because just because it's a supplement and it has natural label on it doesn't mean it's clean, it's vetted, it's the right dosage, and it's right for you. So 
I always like to say it's a billion dollar industry. The, the supplement business is a billion dollar industry and people can get kind of um, snowed even by that industry, right? And you and I believe that food is medicine. You and I believe that, you know, treating your body as a temple and taking care of it is the best way forward. So if you believe in that, then supplements aren't always the first line of, uh, you know, approach. You can't supplement away a bad lifestyle. You do need to have good foundations with nutrition and sleep and stress reduction and movement before you then, you know, take something as an adjunct to help support the system. And it's not forever. That's another thing. So when people, people come to see me, if they're deficient, let's say you're deficient in zinc, Chef AJ, I would say to you, here are the foods that will help you improve your imbalance. Let's get you loaded up with a little bit of zinc for the next 30 days. Let me check your levels again. If you've optimized your zinc levels, you don't need to take that supplement as long as you're optimizing your nutrition. So there are places that people will have to take a supplement like B12 because they're just not getting any sources that are um, enough or sufficient for them. So in those cases, I will say, okay, if you're, you're following a vegan lifestyle, you probably need to take that B supplement. So always question whether or not it's right for you. What was it like going to the Chopra Institute or center? I mean, where, where you got trained, what, what was that like? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Deepak Chopra, for those who don't know, um, is, this, is this a physician that has been teaching yoga, meditation, and mindfulness for the last 40 plus years. And he had a center in California at Carlsbad where people would come for retreats and they would spend a whole week in immersion of yoga practices, um, nutrition, movement, lectures, and they moved that retreat to Phoenix. So now the Chopra Center is here at Savannah in Carefree, Arizona. And it's in a resort. So when you come for the week, you get a full immersion experience in Ayurveda. Um, you're detoxing for the whole week from technology, from your work, from stress, and from the foods that you normally eat. The, um, the retreat attendees get their meals prepared for them uh, in an Ayurvedic style. They get lectures every day from physicians like myself um, on different Ayurvedic topics. They get a full Ayurvedic consult from a practitioner like myself. And they get a yoga practice every day and two meditation classes every day. And so when people come in, they go through a detox process. They're given supplements to help them cleanse their body. We teach them how about um, cleaning their nasal cavities, the oral cavities, skin. We um, have, help them with meditation practice to cleanse their mind. We help them with their yoga practice, wherever they are on the spectrum, um, to help them with movement. Um, and when people leave the retreat, they feel nourished and they feel cleansed at the same time. So the whole premise for this five, seven day retreat is to remove the things that don't serve us and to nourish the body with what does and then teach those patients or retreat attendees how they can carry that on through the rest of their life. So I think it's a wonderful program and I'm blessed that they asked me to be part of it. And we have an amazing team of doctors that run that program. Um, and I've just been growing ever since for myself as well. That sounds like amazing. I mean, even if like if you didn't have any problems just to go there, it sounds like a great retreat. Yeah, you get nourished and pampered all at the same time. <laughs> it kind of sounds like Rancho La Puerta, but with some medical. Uh, Bryant says, have you ever had any experience teaching this information in medical schools? So I've been a medical uh, preceptor for the last 18 years. Um, I've had medical residents, MedPeds residents from Banner Good Sam in my clinic since I started practice. So since 2003, I've had medical residents rotate through and medical students come through. Um, as um, I'm, I'm also lucky because the program director, uh, Dr. Holland is also a graduate from the Integrative uh, Fellowship in Tucson. So she and I are like-minded, which makes it easier. Um, I think you have to have somebody in the administrative department at the, at the university that's willing to see things eye to eye. I also teach at the uh, University of uh, Arizona Medical School here in Phoenix. So I do pre certificates for the students. We do like um, a case presentation. So the last case that I, I did with these students was a, a 55 year old woman that was overweight, that had hypertension, had prediabetes. And then I take these medical students through an integrative process of how we would create a comprehensive plan for her. Uh, so it's, it's, been, it's been nice. I've been able to do a lot of work 
a lot of work with students and residents. That is great. Well, I so appreciate the work you do. It's just, I, I just, I, you know, I'm sure there's, well, I was going to say maybe not here where I live, but there's other types of doctors like you other places. If people couldn't go to Arizona, is there like a place to look up how to find a doctor like yourself? Yes. So there are two physician search um, sites and I can send them to you. They're um, for the University of Arizona's integrative program. Um, it's called the Andrew Weil Center of Integrative Medicine. Um, and they have a search uh, place where you can go in and search for physicians that are integrative trained. And then the IFM, which is the Institute of Functional Medicine through Cleveland Clinic. If you went to the IFM.org, they also have a physician search to look for certified uh, functional doctors in your area. Um, so that's a great way to start, at least if you're looking for an integrative or functional doctor. Right. And then um, board certification, of course, like I said, board certification allows you to know that your doctor went above and beyond to help you um, with, with the information that they know. So that's just another way to, to look them up is to see who's board certified because you don't necessarily have to be board certified to practice. And you also don't have to be trained to practice because the titles can be used so uh, frivolously in our, in our uh, medical community, unfortunately. Yeah, please give me those resources and also how people can go to that retreat. That would, that sounds, that's yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah, I'll tell you, that yeah. sounds, that sounds I would sounds love to me. see you there one day. I know, well, I would, my mind is already like, hmm, how can I get there? Maybe they'll let me teach or something. That sounds yeah, absolutely that's beautiful. Me. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. Well, th how can we support you, follow you? Do you like people to follow you on Instagram? What, where do you like to land? So I'm on, I'm on all of me, all the steps. So my TikTok is where I do my one minute videos. So if you're interested in health uh, information, join my TikTok. It's Jyoti Patel MD. Um, and my Instagram is Dr. Jyoti Patel MD. My Facebook is Jyoti Patel MD. So if you type Jyoti Patel MD on any of those platforms, Twitter, you'll find me there as well. So um, my mission is to educate. I have lots of things coming up. If you're interested in plant-based nutrition, I'll be teaching, um, I'll be doing a food demonstration on June 5th, which is Saturday. Uh, Arizona time at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And it's on the Fountain Hills uh, Community Garden Facebook group page. So I, I think I provided the links, Chef AJ, but I'll be teaching um, tempeh bolognese. So tempeh is a fermented tofu dish and right now tomatoes are in season. So we're gonna do a bolognese uh, with zucchini noodles. Again, a great time to plant your squash and zucchini. And then I'm gonna do a kale uh, salad. Again, I have a ton of kale in my garden. I'm I'm sort of biased because I'm using what I have. And I'll be doing a chia uh, banana pudding as well. So you're welcome to join the Fountain in the Hills Community Garden group. And you'll see me go live on uh, on, on the 5th. Of That's June. perfect because it's an hour before my show. So I'll be able to watch. I oh, can't yay. wait to see. I can't wait. I love the, I love when doctors cook. I, I, I've done quite a few doctor chef interviews and it's wonderful. Yeah, I have another seminar if people are interested in plant medicine. I'm doing sleep and uh, plant medicine, which is CBD and cannabis. And I, I know that's always a very hot topic, but um, again, we're doing that on June 2nd at 5.30. Great. Well, thank that's you it. so much for putting the fun back in functional medicine. Yeah, <laughs> my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Uh, I am honored. Oh my God, the, the honor was all mine. And thank you, Dr. Patel. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. We have a bonus show today at 2 p.m. We have Kiyomi from See Me Tea. She is going to be telling you all about the benefits of green tea, which we know are profound, but she actually has a wonderful organic caffeine-free one, as well as a caffeine-free coffee. And I've tasted them both and they are fantastic. Thanks again, Dr. Patel.